Hey, it's Joe Lies for Automator, and in this video we're going to talk about what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. Let me uh, switch to the desktop, run, recently modified, I already adjusted by DPI, recently modified scripts, and you know, I think we did a lot of client work, so I don't think we've worked on a lot of, of our scripts. Of course, our client work takes priority, um, one is because of course we make direct money, which is great, but also because um, you know we want our clients to get their their stuff, their projects as soon as possible. Um, Jeff, um, all of these here, the, these these are we're doing a, a tool for him. It integrates a lot of stuff between LinkedIn and um, HubSpot and some other stuff of automating emails and and LinkedIn Connect options. And he wants us to adjust for the time zone in which they're in. Which um, I, and I'm not knocking this a bad idea. It's I'm knocking the amount of work it's going to take us to do, given that we do or don't know really what time zone they're in. Um, I just don't trust the data that much, and uh, I think it's something we should add later. But he wants to do now, which I said that that's fine. But um, this tool, by the way, I don't think we've ever shared this tool. It's a script we wrote. I initially wrote it for myself to run on my computer because Isaias and Irfan will be doing stuff, I'll share my screen, and they I want them to take remote control, but they have to ask for it, then I have to go find, because I got three monitors, and sometimes finding where I can give them control takes time. So we wrote a script, it uses UIA, to watch for that request, and then auto accept it right away. So um, this is on Jeff's computer, because he has a spare computer that we, we um, share the screen with Zoom and Isaias remotes in and starts working on it. And uh, so it's great having that running. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. Um, I'll get it online sooner rather than later because I'll probably forget after I make this video. Um, it's just not something I think most people would want, but it is great to have. Um, it, it, it helps. Um, we did a pair of little work for Thomas. It's another client of ours. Um, maybe Isaias helped with this grab text when user selects, uh, which obviously he, we, we did a lot of stuff for him quite a while ago. and. Uh, he's a hero member. Um, um, I haven't seen him. I think he moved recently, but uh, he's in Germany. And anyway, I'm just not sure exactly what we did there. Uh, maybe, he had, maybe he had a quick bug fix. And then for this client, um, we're doing a lot of stuff for them. One thing we're doing is um, our client typically runs a report, and in the report, crazily enough, there's no way to export the data. So they write down the numbers, and then they have. Then they also there's a lot of technical things going with that. So it's not clear. So we've automated ripping it out of the tool because there's no way, even though you can't, you can run it, run a report in their tool, but you can't save it, which is crazy, or export it. So we've automated the part where we get the numbers, we um, get the numbers, tell it what it means, and then we append. She has a bunch of data that says, hey, if this score is you know too low, low or high. Um, here's what it means, and here's how it affects you know other things that might affect it. So um, that she keeps in her head. Now it'll be right there, printed on the screen, uh, on the on the worksheet with her. We were also talking about. I was talking to Zayce about it because we don't know if everybody has Excel that's going to be running this. Um, for her, we know she does. So we could pop it open in Excel and then use Excel to force a header on every page to say the the client. Um, ID, the client name, and the date, because it's great if you print something out to have that embedded in there, and then you don't have to worry about misplacing it or you know or uh, mixing them up because that's all on every page. Uh, because we're exporting it from HTML to PDF, that's not easy to do directly, but maybe with the PDF tool, we can add a header uh, or a footer on each page. So hopefully we can take care of that. I think that'll really be nice for her. But we've been doing a lot of stuff for her. Um, awesome. Uh, this is a, a, another client. He's like a day trader. So we automated. He has a tool for with his company that allows him to get data. But it's very, he can get up to 200 records, but he wants like 2,000. And so he was manually switching the, the 200 and looping over things. And it was really a tedious process. So we've automated it where he hits a button and a couple seconds later, instead of probably an hour, um, it's done. And it's all automated and formatted and everything for him. So it's very cool. Um, saves him a ton of time. Uh, let's see, bookmarks, bookmarks. I don't even know what that is. Um, I mean, that's a, I don't know why that got edited. That's weird. Edit test. Uh, one of our hero members was having a problem. He was trying to use the edit 
uh, command in his script, and for whatever reason, this approach he was having um, VS Code was not popping it open for him. Um, so I tried doing it this way. He had a different way. This seemed this worked great. Um, here's a fat arrow. It's my first fat arrow. Yay! So I wrote a fat arrow. So it also um, I I kill the default menus in your system tray icon, uh, and then I add back an edit one. Um, and then I also have a hotkey directly that will call it. So here I'm referring to adding the tray. I should have probably had a, a blank line in here. Oops. Oh, I'm trying to edit like as if this is an editor. This is just a scintilla window. Um, but I should have had a blank line in there to show that. But that's a hotkey. And I call the my edit function. Um, and here, oh, you know what? Oh, that's funny. Here I didn't even do that. So I adapted it entirely over. Here, I could have called um, the my edit, my own function edit, right? Initially, um, he was do he was calling a different function, and I'm like, I don't understand why you don't just call the normal um, command or function, whatever you want to refer to it as. So yeah, so anyway, I was helping him with that a little bit uh, in voice and tech. Now, someone else wrote me, and um, they, they're they like, hey, how much would it be to, they want to hit the letter, they said they want to hit, Type the letter T and have it say thank you for your invoice. Type R and hit received. You know an A. So they want they they they're new to auto hotkey entirely, right? So she was wondering. I think it was a, a girl uh, wanting to know how hard how much would it cost to do this. And I'm like, okay, there's you know A. There's two approaches: hotkeys and hot strings. And first off, you don't want it just to be T. You want it probably with a modifier, right? So like Control Shift T or Control Shift R. So she agreed a oh, control shift with the letters. That does make sense because otherwise you would lose those letters, right? You couldn't use a T in your sentence, um, which would be a little annoying. Um, so, but I also told her, hey, you know what? You can also use hot strings, right? Which are also, I kept them very short um, for dot .ty. Dot, so I don't want to use just dot .t, dot .r, dot .a, dot .h because that might have a miss, uh, you know, a, a false trip so I, I i like to have at least a couple letters so i put in hot strings um for her and actually she said on i think she was in chrome uh, in gmail or somewhere that um the control shift t and then second one i forget which one she said wasn't working because the other tool had a hot key that did that but she said a couple working but she she loved the hot strings so um that was very cool that she's i i, I told her I'm not going to charge you for hotkeys and hot strings, right? Like it's, um, it took me a couple minutes to do this. Um, of course, I, I also recorded a video to explain it because that's the harder part, right? It's not just the code. It's if you don't know what a hotkey, you have to know. You have to relaunch the script. You have to add it to your auto start. Um, you have to make sure that it's running in the, the green H and the system tray icon and all that stuff. Um, but I told her, you know, this is just the very, very beginnings, right? Because there's so much more you can do. Our resolve driver. We have an S drive that's a fake drive that we create, and it um, it's really cool. All right, sorry, my uh, son's been mowing the lawn, and he just pulled up out there. So anyway, where were we? Moving on, Resolve Drive Resolver, Resolve Drive. So we, and I'm gonna have to do. We haven't released this. I think we did release the fake drive maker, but we have another tool. It allows you, we create an S drive or whatever, A to B drive. I have I have A, B, and S are all fakes. Um, they're just subfolders under my Dropbox, but we create a drive, so it's very convenient. And then Irfan and Rizwan and Isaiah all have the S drive, and then all of our paths are the same. Well, when you're on the S drive, Dropbox doesn't offer you a hyperlink for the file. So um, this resolve drive, I think, brings you right back to the actual real folder where it is, where you can easily get that hyperlink. So... Um, and Isaiah mentioned something of like he didn't blank out the variable or something, but there was a problem, so that's what he updated on that. Um, but I, this this resolve drive, I don't think we've shared yet, so we, we could do that at some point. This effortless video reducer. We noticed a couple other minor little tweaks. Let me show you. I got it here on my screen. Let me bring it over. I ran it on, on um, a bunch of videos I had, and, and it took like three days. Now, it sounds bad because it takes three days, right? But you'll see um, I, I looped over... Um, where I thought somewhere in here, it I thought I thought it said it was um, it was three thousand videos. I forget how many. It was a lot of videos. 
uh, or, um, but notice I, I saved, it's now 40% the size of what it was, um, and we saved this many megabytes. I'm not sure what that is. Is that 13 gigabytes, I think, is how much space I saved? I think. Um, very cool tool. I was running it at the faster instead of fastest, so the, the quality was, was good. The H.265 encoder, man, it's just amazing, and I didn't drop the um, fitness for the audio too much. Human humans, you can drop it to almost 32, and it still sounds it sounds a little tinny, but it's not terrible. But 64 makes it where you don't even notice. Um, and I was actually deleting the original files because I trust this tool so much now. Um, it took 82 hours. Um, you know, I didn't realize that we should have something on this. This is the the final um, view. We should be mentioning how many files it looped over. Um, maybe it is, and I just didn't cr cropped it because this is an entire screen, but. Yeah, very, very cool tool. It's it's like 10 bucks, but boy, it's, you know, Handbrake does what it does. They both are, they're wrapping FFmpeg. Um, FFmpeg's a great tool, um, and, and Handbrake's free, but Handbrake does 8 million things, and it takes a lot of knowledge to understand how to set it up, and it's just confusing. I know it well, and I still don't want to use it, because it just takes time. This tool, so simple, so easy. Um, we love it. So um, check that uh, tool out if you're interested in, in gaining some space from your videos, um, on your computer. Unit tests. Um, so apparently, uh, either Isaiah or Irfan were building tests so we can um, easily see when things go wrong, right? It's a really great way to do that. MP3 Ripper is another great one. Um, it's also, it's it's over $5. I forget how much it is, but it um, allows you to rip the audio out of your video files. So it's super handy. Um, I'll take a lot of those videos I was talking about and let's say there's seminars and whatever, and I can create audio files and just put them on my phone and just listen to them. And one of the file size is nothing. It also takes, what, like a second, two seconds or something to rip the audio. It's insanely fast, but it's a great way to, to get audio files out of a video um, to have them and use them however you want. Um, this concatenator, I wish, I think this one might run. Let me see if I can double click on my run. No, um, apparently not, but, um, I'll explain more when we get it into V2. This is the V1 version that makes your throat years ago, and we tried patching it so we could do a bunch of stuff, and uh, it was just gonna take too much work to get it back up and running, and we with our FFmpeg class, it's not gonna be hard to recreate it. But basically, we have a list of videos, like on my channel, um, I'll have our main videos. Well, some people want an intro, and some people want an exit, right? Um, videos to append to those. So. Our tool allows you to have a, a list of intros, a list of exit videos, um, and then you would just import the ones you're trying to work on and tell it which ones you want as the intro and extra, and then go rip them, right? And it can concatenate them all together for you. It's a really great tool for people who have YouTube channels. So, um, and actually, if you're like even in, in corporate America or something, right? You might want to have your logo or something at the beginning with a little bit of sound or music, and then the back something about your department or something, right? If you can easily do that and not have to go edit and do it, it's, it's, it's great. Um, so yeah, that was um, all of those right there. Finding best audio. Um, I was telling Isaiah earlier today, I was asking, because um, our MP3 Ripper doesn't work on YouTube videos. Someone asked and I'm like, no, it, it you know, there's a thing called YouTube download um, that you can use to download the audio or video files from uh, YouTube video and they YouTube changes their you know how they do stuff all the time and so we don't want to be maintaining that right but um I was trying to see if we could still do it with auto hotkey and uh what was funny was AI tool I asked to start doing it actually thought I meant I want to find the best audio stream in my video local video file so I was chatting with Isaiah of like you know we we might look at that as well because when we're ripping this mp3 file, we're not looking at which stream, if there's more than one stream in your video, it's quite possible they have more than one version of the audio f in your video file. And we should probably first take a look and see what's the best quality one, right? Um, and, and rip it from that as a, as a better way to make sure we have the best quality sound. Um, so this is one, this is a YouTube download. Uh, um, it's auto hotkey, but it, it wraps the YouTube downloader. I wrote it years ago, and it makes it easy to download a video um, with YouTube. But it something changed, and so I never it, it I haven't gone and updated it. Um, oh, this one now we need to make a download. I don't think we have a download for this yet. But during the hero call, 
um, Irfan demonstrated it. Isaias, for, for Jeff, one of those clients who's doing stuff on LinkedIn, often he's trying to do web scraping when you are automating the browser. That can be very tedious because browsers suck. Like, I don't know how else to say it. They're, they're very painful to automate. It's the worst, hardest thing to do in, in automation is automate a browser. So what we like to do is imitate a browser that often, depending on the website you're connecting to, means you need your cookies. And sometimes it's very easy to get some of your cookies, but not all of your cookies. Uh, some websites have a secure cookie that's very hard. Even with auto control, you can't get it. And so sometimes you have a certain um, things where it's really hard to grab. It used to be easy with IE. Um, there was an XML HTTP request that would borrow your IE cookie. So you could have people log in with IE and then use that other com object and it would borrow your cookies automatically from IE and you didn't have to worry about it. Well, this Git Chrome cookies um, script, it re relies on the Refadium tool overall that Irfan wrote. Um, so you still have to download the web driver stuff, but the, the exact script itself is very simple. Um, he demonstrated it in the hero call. We'll probably make another video and we'll make the download um, available. But it's great when you want to borrow your cookies from Chrome and use them to automate things and use HTTP requests instead of uh, using your browser. So it's very cool. I can't wait. To, we got to make a video on this, a separate video. Do not disturb. Um, ironically, I didn't use it right now. So if, I, if someone messaged me or something, I would get a notification. But um, we now have a hotkey. You can hit a hotkey and it will toggle you in and out of do not disturb mode in Windows 11. So... Um, this is cool because when I'm going to go make a video, I might even set it up when I launch OBS to always start Do Not Disturb mode, right? Because if I'm in OBS, I'm recording, right? And I don't want to be disturbed. Um, so that might be a nice automatic way to use that tool. Um, you know, watch for certain programs, but also it's it's simple to hit a hotkey and, and instantly switch to Do Not Disturb. Otherwise, it's kind of painful to get to it. And uh, so our script will be, that'll be very cool for that. Um, this Windows 11 check, this is, this is just part of... Um, and I wish it was here. I don't know where that's coming from. Oh, here's the build um, on which version of Windows. So, so Irfan, actually, apparently, I didn't talk to him about this, but Windows 11, when you go look at when it says what version of Windows, it still says, like, Windows 10. It's, it's really the OS version. It's really crazy. So... What we understood is that there's a certain build number when it's above it, that's when you're in Windows 11. So that's what he's doing here to say, hey, we only want to run that tool if you're in Windows 11, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, but this is one we're gonna have to borrow and we'll share at some point because it's, it's a great little tool. Our Automator Spy, um, I'm gonna have to go update a video on it. Let me see if I can, actually I should be able to watch it with my hotkey. So this is our Automator Spy. And what's really cool about this is if I was over, let me hit my right control, um, if, if my window title, like here, had Unicode characters, they would get flagged right in here. They would get highlighted with like a red color because sometimes there are spaces or dashes that aren't what you think and you try typing your um, window title in your code and, you, and things don't work. And that's because they're actually Unicode characters. They're not what you think they are. So we changed this so this is a scintilla control and it flags that. We also... Have it where when you go over, uh, look. Let me let me hit my thing again. Um, and down here we have it's a hey, that's a 64-bit program. It that what your mouse was over it was a 132 control, which is great to know, right? Um, both those things. And if it was run as an admin somewhere, um, it'll it'll um, maybe this is says normal process. But that would be red and say it's an admin tool. So. Um, a couple of those things where the, this control, this we added recently, um, the other stuff is in the, the video on the Automator Spy. So, oh, actually, which we, we haven't made, so never mind. There is no video on it. Um, it is available for purchase for, I think, $19.99. And um, it's, it's a cool little tool. It, you can use the normal Windows uh, Auto Hotkey Spy, but our tool breaks things out in a much easier way to use. And like here, if you come in here and copy, and when you go to paste, um, let me open notepad. I think this got done now, let's see. No, damn, still hasn't happened. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break those, automatically return the, um, we're gonna automatically flatten those onto one line, because if you're selecting all these, you're gonna use them in one line, right? So. 
And, and we're gonna surround them like this, which I'm really surprised that hasn't happened. I don't know, I think we, we're gonna add the quotes too, right? Um, so something like that, but, and here I don't know if, I don't remember in V2 if these are all surrounded quotes or not, but we're gonna handle that for you as well. And we don't have the ID and PID because we almost never use those. It's very rare that we use those, but you can still get them. I can click here and they get copied to the clipboard. Oops. Um, and notice those are flattened. Um, and notice also it says AKHK ID, not just ID, right? But um, because we rarely, oh, that's funny. That's off the screen. That's bad. Um, this needs to get moved somewhere. I'm going to bring that up to Irfan. I'm like, that's that's bad. That that always needs to be. You know what? If we put those first, even though it doesn't make sense, if we put those first, the problem is this is a wide title, right? So um, or no, it's just it's just that we widened um, window title class and process. Yeah, we'll just we'll shorten the length of how. Um, there's no reason to. I don't even understand why this is so such a big space here. He's probably trying to line it up with that, but that it's anyway. We're so few. Oh. Also, part of it's my um, my crazy wide scroll bars, right? Which, um, you know, I, I have a script that did that for Windows 11, um, and that one you can grab also. I hate those in Windows 11, the new scroll bar widths. And this is a bit overkill, I understand that, but um, I'm gonna, have, I'll dial it back some, but it, it's a great little tool to make your scroll bars wider. I would go change it, but it actually takes a reboot for it to take effect. And we couldn't find any way to get it to, to not require a reboot. So. That's it, 36 files, oh, yeah, that's it. 36 files that we worked on this last week. That's, for us, that's very low, but that's because we were really doing a lot of client work. Um, Rizwan has been working on an Urdu version of our Automator course. Um, anyway, all right, so thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll see you around. Remember, um, you know, yeah, our scripts are for sale. Oh, by the way, also, am I still sharing? Yeah. Um, I've been playing with Cursor. So Cursor is a, a great, you'll see a lot of AI people videos talking about using Cursor as an editor. It's based off of, what I didn't understand was it's based off of VS Code, right? So what's really cool is you can launch Cursor, import your VS Code settings, which use the same extension. So my AutoHotKey V1 and V2 extensions I had in VS Code are working in Cursor. And Cursor adds, a bit more uh, easy ways to use AI in it. Um, so even without Copilot, you can do stuff within it. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. I'm no expert on it yet. We did create um, a, a rules file for AutoHotKey. So if you go look at the cursor.rules, I think it's the website. Um, we, we have the AutoHotKey. We made a template there you might want to borrow, uh, which is cool. So you can it, you can tell it, hey, for, for these files or for all my files or just for this kind of file or extension, here are the rules I want you to use. You can also point to the documentation, which is really cool. So you can point to the V2 documentation if you're using V2 or point to V1 if you're using V1. And it's gonna use that to help assist you as you're working, which I think is just amazing. Um, it can also look at your whole Git repository, which again, that way it's gonna match closer to what you're doing, right? Which I think is really cool. Um, great, it's gonna be a, a great way to do Work smarter, not harder. Um, also, this this DMK or QMK tool, Geek Dude's been working on. Do I have it in front of me? No, I, I must have moved it somewhere. Um, we're creating a keyboard that we can program the keys and have them programmed to do certain things and sell the keyboards. So we're going to make some for like Zoom, right? We'll make a Zoom keyboard and uh, and be able to program it. And they don't need to install it a hotkey. They'll just have the keyboard. We get it. They get it to them as long as the default hotkeys that Zoom assigns are still in place for them, because that's what it's good we're gonna probably use, unless we can figure out a, like a post message way to do it. Um, that's what we'll do. Um, we could, of course, install auto hotkey and then do a much more advanced stuff, but anyway, this is the, the plan, is to be able to program the, the keyboard itself and to be able to share it with people. So um, that was one of the things he had given me to, to go and see if, if because uh, he has, the keyboards and the programs at, at his home or, or wherever he's programming. And then I ordered the same keyboards and got it installed um, with Isaiah's help because it was a little advanced. That part of it was advanced, but um, we got it to work on my computer. Um, so we got it to find it and stuff. So it's very cool. I'm looking forward to, to be able to produce keyboards for software, um, program them and write them. And so we can sell them. And it's not the selling of them, it's that we can make it easy for people to, because most people don't want to learn how to program, right? So 
just one more thing we've been working on. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching. Remember, we have great auto hockey courses with double your back money guarantee. We also do a lot of client work. So if you're interested, you know, and hey, if you just want to talk through a solution that you, you might want us to have us work on, um, we can jump on Zoom and, and see because it, it people ask us how much is something going to cost. And I'm like, I have no idea, right? We need to play with the um, software and and, and poke it and see what are the best ways we can automate it. We need to know how robust of a solution you're looking for. Um, also, what happens nine out of ten times is once people start seeing what we can do, they add, they quadruple the amount of things that they want to do because they realize, holy cow, um, I can. they can get so much more done than what they were anticipating, and it's not a crazy cost. So get, give me a shout-out if you're interested in, in having a, a discovery call. Um, that'd be fine. Cheers. Have a great day.